first coin or token that you saw that you thought was like, wow, this is really cool to hold in my hand. Like, I, I like having this. Well, Just simply I'm, having it. I still actually have one of these. So this is cool that you asked me this. Uh, there was an old arcade place uh, up in Kalamazoo back in the day. It was called the Fun Factory. And it was on the same mall that they had a movie theater. So before we ever went to see seen a movie, we run into the Fun Factory and play a couple games and kill some time, right? They had their own tokens. And what was cool about them was they had two guys kind of, they kind of looked like Mario and Luigi in a sense. They had like suspenders and kind of a, but it was just, it wasn't really made out, but it looked like kind of like them. Yeah. And the coin itself was jaggedy. So they only fit in the arc in the um, the game systems in a certain way at the fun factory. So it wasn't quarters there. It was specifically that was the only place that did that too, other than maybe Star World. Those might be inter uh those been in other states too, I believe, Star World games. What's yours? Uh for me I I wanna say it might have been like a train token. Mm. You know, I've always I've always been fascinated with with coins, and but I always thought the you know I miss the old days where you could just put a train token inside of a slot, like it's an arcade, mm -hmm. and you know just go right through do the you, train. Like there was. Do you collect coins? I have a few of them, to be honest with you. I have a lot of old ones. I have some USSR USSR ones. Ooh. Yeah, I have, I, I, have a, cool. I have a couple World War II era ones. I have some Ukrainian yep. ones, some Russian ones. So I have a lot of European coins, uh, a couple silver dollars, yep. which are which I, I love. So I, I I have I have a really cool love for props like that. But also, you know, and I didn't I didn't even think about this while while we were working on this. Um, mm -hmm. Our challenge coins from the military. Oh my God, I forgot about those too. You know, I have, you know, I got, a, I got several of those too. And actually those are, those are actually probably one of the coolest things I've ever held in my hand as well. Mm -hmm. you know, but They're unique, simply, definitely. Yeah, but very simply, it goes back to me like tokens, arcade tokens too. You know, but it was really cool how like back then, you know, you had these tokens. They were smaller. Some of them would be in the shape of pentagons, some of them were octagons. Ooh. You know, really? Which, yeah, like some of our train tokens were kind of like octagony, with a wow. hole with a hole right in the center. Okay, now I've seen some like that. Uh, they were miners' tokens. Okay. Which I don't know was probably like eighteen or early nineteen hundreds, where miners lived in small towns, you know, made up, built up towns, and they would use those tokens to buy stuff with the holes in them. Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm looking at them now. They actually have. Um... They actually sell them at the National Museum I, of American History. I believe I have one. I got some weird coins like that. Some I, Chinese I, coins are like that too. Oh yeah, it them. does. It, okay, so I see like so like they have mining tokens that have like that octagon shape, and then they have the ones mm. with, with the holes in them. Yep. Um, I I think they're so cool. I there's something really cool about them. I'm, and I'm actually the history looking at uh, awesome too. I'm actually looking at a 1980s. Um, New York City train token and the Y Ooh. in it in the center is hollowed out. Huh. It's actually really cool, you know, but now you know a lot of there's the Metro card now in New York City, so a lot of you know companies are are doing the token thing. But it'd be nice to, to see it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was wanna... thinking of that when we were doing a project as far as like a, a possible use for highways and stuff for uh, car washes and yeah. self-maintenance kind of a thing or something. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go into the let's go into our coins. Yes, this week it is coins, people. Coins, 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 coins. Get your, coins, get coins. your tokens ready and uh, you you go first. <laughs> okay. So throughout our podcasting uh, on this show I have been trying diligently to get a version of me that I have been satisfactory with and up until this point I'm I wasn't there uh, when we decided to do this coin show 
it decided to work for me. So uh, basically, um, what I did was I took a side view on my camera of me, and then I put that in Mid Journey, and then I believe I did a. I just found a picture of a penny basically on Google, and tried to super them superimpose them over myself. Yeah. And it worked to whereas like I was telling you before the show, you would see me. Uh, sitting sideways but you'd also see the coin kind of over my face so you'd see what you're seeing now but my body would still be in the picture so I kind of doctored it up a little bit uh, I don't ever use Photoshop for something but it just I thought it would look better it would it would you'd see more of the coin detail if you didn't see the rest of the background that I had yeah so you, I, have some, you have some good you have some really nice engravings on it and it kind of, it's like, yeah it's all kind of like a pie like mm -hmm. on, right on the edges. Kind of reminded me of the Roman times. Yeah. Yeah, it's very. It's yours, God. Uh, so what my. You going on with yours? So you know, I always go the HD photo route. Um, always going for like an intricate uh, photo design. So what I did was I made a photo. I made a coin made for. A coin made for with the design of a star map to symbolize the love and curiosity of outer space. Uh, I, I, the one thing that I love about coins and tokens is the engravings. You know, the things that you can touch mm -hmm. when you touch a coin. What, what, what can you feel? I've always thought that's always been such a cool thing to have in a coin because it's such intricate detail on a, on metal. You know, on a, on a piece of some type of earthly metal and. I love the design of this because we have like, so the outer borders has like some, you got some words in there, mm -hmm. you know, which is probably like some kind of like NASA space saying or something. You got the star maps and you got the planets. But what I love is that the planets are kind of like bulbing out. Like Braille almost. So you can yeah. feel like, like which coin is this, this mapping, if you will. Uh, this certain galaxy is on this coin this certain galaxy is on another coin so you could tell by just feeling it yeah you know hmm yeah so that's I, I, I love how this one came out uh, I had a, I had another one that came out really good but I chose this one to probably show it off mm -hmm. in the in our social medias the next one yeah that turned out really good so uh what was the recent coin they did for the U.S. that was uh, not necessarily a president? Wasn't it uh, a civil rights leader or something? I forget. But anyways, I thought they should do more coins, even if they're, um, what was the term I was using? Limited time. Yeah. Of like our modern day philosophers, artists, musicians, you know, poets, their side of the uh, United States. So... Who else could do that but George Carlin? So that's what I came up with. Um, you know, during this uh, this project of doing coins, I didn't really have too much struggle with um, what I was trying to accomplish. And George came out within the first try, I believe. Um, he came out perfect. Yeah. Lightness, lightness worked for me this round. What I like about really? this is that you went with like a cool design, like giving it, like, you know, and we're, and we're in a time now. I mean, I think the new quarter Celia Cruz is going to be in, uh, which okay. is a, which is a very big deal. But I think if we lived in a time where comedy was, it where people didn't feel so afraid of comedy, I think we would have seen George Carlin on the coin. I mean, I think it needs to happen. Like I said, like a, a limited time thing where just uh, within five years they come out with some different coins of different things like that. And he's, you know, been time honored at this point. Yeah, he has. Um, he's spoken more truth. He, it's, he has spoken so much truth through his comedy, too. I mean, it would just make sense for. He would have made a great professor, even though he didn't like the idea of being. Yeah. I just. Good philosophy, really. The one that I got is the Doomsday Clock. Okay. So I've been reading, i actually been reading a lot of comics lately. Um, last, I actually just went through the whole DC Comics Rebirth, 
which led into uh, the Doomsday Clock, which was like a tale which kind of tied in the Watchmen into the DC okay. universe a little more. It was a really good story. I was I was locked into it every step of the way. So what if we made a coin with the Doomsday Clock? And I really... So I wanted, a, obviously, HD photo of a coin made for with the design of the Doomsday Clock. Coin design, coin design blueprint. What I love about this is that you have a clock in the coin. Mm-hmm. You have the engravings, but you also have, like, you know, is is the center of it our planet exploding? You know, mm-hmm. is that the Doomsday that, that we're awaiting? So I wanted, I wanted to do, I wanted to put it in a coin. I wanted to bring it a little dark, I think coin design could be really really intricate especially with all the custom coin design makers that are out there right now oh yeah, man it would be cool stuff it would be really nice to see this this coin made i think it's very nice i think it's a great idea too now i don't know much about dc other than watchmen like i've watched those now uh mr god what's his name the blue guy you know who dr I'm manhattan about. Dr. Manhattan. Now, was he the one that actually made the Doomsday Clock? No. Did he make that? Okay. I'm it was a, it was a bu- it was a it was a bunch of scientists. Okay. They made it because of him, in in the story. Uh, but you know, okay. in real time, they made it because of you know impending nuclear warfare, mm-hmm. you know, during that era of time. Okay. Like I knew the Watchmen part, but I didn't know the backstory. I don't know my DC as much as I do my Marvel, so I'm glad. I'm around, or you're around to fill me in on that. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm a DC guy through and <laughs> through. And this continues on with our uh, salute to uh, artists, musicians, poets, writers. Uh, again, no trouble really. Uh, the first round I did of David Bowie, uh, I believe this was the fourth picture that I had in the, the thumbnails, and I really like it, so I popped that one open. I like it. You know, it's, you know, this is a part of the art series. Have you seen coins? Uh, I had one of John F. Kennedy. It's, a, I believe, it's a fifty cent piece, and that one's actually colored. I, you had to probably order it. It's one of those that my grandparents gave me or something. But it's actually got color in it, like it's been painted. Yeah. This would be cool if Bowie's hair was at least red. Ah, interesting. Interesting. A little bit of flair in there. It kind of has like a pennies engraving too. Yes, very. No, it's it's very it's very deep. It's very deep. simplistic. Uh, so the coin design that I have here, I wanted a up close photo of a new coin design for the, for the United States of America. Ooh. You know, I I wanted I I'd like a thick coin. You know, so when like when I'm holding like a silver dollar or like a. Or even like a yeah, you know, I like a little weight to it. I like a little thickness to it. So I mean, we, we I'd like to see a quarter get a little thick on its sides, man. Like, and we're talking like triple C thick because co- a coin has to be heavy, and no, and everybody loves a good quarter. Mm-hmm. There used to, I used to know the reason why it was um, uh, indented on the sides. I believe because they, they were cutting the sides off, like they were. Not the actual mint that like people would cut them off and use them for other things. Yeah, and that's why they started making the jaggedy, uh, not jaggedy, but imprints on the side. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, and that's another thing like that a lot of coins have. They have like those edges, like a pie, you know, like the closed mm-hmm. edges. So I, I, I always thought that was really cool. Um, our and our last ones, and then I got a little, I got a little history lesson for you. Right after this. So, I mean, it's easily recognizable who that is. That's Bender Bending Rodriguez. He'd bend a coin if he could. I'm going to have a little humor. The man, the man, the man wasn't enough. The man could, could, he could bend anything. And the world. That's Bender. Uh, yep. So I want to do a little cartoon route, like, you know, I do. And, um, again, no problems. Bender came out pretty good. Uh, the only thing I would probably would have suggest was some eyeballs. But I, th- okay. I think it's perfect. Yeah. I mean, on a coin, I don't think you really do see anyone's actual pupils. So, so it's sticking we, true. 
so I mean, in a in a world, because like I, 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 it's safe to say that we're both huge Futurama fans. You know, mm-hmm. whatever the currency is in New New York. You know, it would be safe to say that Bender is a legend enough in New New York God, that he point. would be that he would be in a coin. I mean, he was human at one point. He um, he was in the robot crazy house. He's uh, the only one pretty much around like him. Yeah, there's no there's there's no one like Mr. Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good character too, and I mean, oh, yeah. is it safe to say that the coin is made out of him? Ooh, out of a shiny metal ass. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yours almost looks like a shield to me in a sense, too. What you All got right. going on? So this one I got really descriptive with, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the coin of prosperity. Ah. I wanted this to be like a $50 coin. That's, it's got some heft to it. I can see that. Yeah, we got a $50 coin, but I wanted, I wanted the striking... I wanted this to symbolize, I wanted it to be a coin, as thin as a coin, but have the artistry of medallion. You know, it's a... Mm, Dex. Yeah, so we have this this coin currency that reflects the spirit of progress and unity. It, sh- it You know, I wanted to showcase this majestic eagle, wings spread wide, embodying strength and sovereignty. Intricately crafted gear symbolize harmonious progress while laurel leaves and olive branches signify victory and peace. Um, there's rays of light on the celestial backdrop, uh, illuminate the path to a brighter future with regal with with regals and radiant gold. Uh, this is a timeless work of art. I, I wish this could be made. It's a, it, and, and I think that this coin would be something really nice to have, like to inspire hope for a world of prosperity and more unity. Uh, the eagle has always symbolized our country uh, even as veterans, you know, we look at the bald eagle as, you know, our sign of hope. It's not our Kryptonian S that we're all so no. used to. Uh, it's always but, been symbolic with strength and stuff like that and loyalty and yeah, those kind of things. Yeah, so it's there's some really, some really nice stuff. And, you know, coins are cool. Absolutely. Coins are really cool, right? So, uh, they have like a really rich and fascinating history that it spans thousands of years. And they have played a pivotal role in the development of civilizations and the evolution of trade and commerce. Yeah. And like, you know, just a light, just a couple light notes that I have here. Um, the origin of coins was a form of money originated around the 7th century BCE, for those who don't know that's before Christ. In the ancient kingdom of Lydia, located in modern-day Turkey, uh, the Lydians created the first standardized metal coins made of naturally occurring alloy called electrum, a mix of gold and silver. Uh, these coins had distinct hmm. markings, making them recognizable and trusted by traders and merchants. So think like when like pirates had their pirates booty, and mm-hmm. They had like, you know, there was engravings on these gold coins, you know, like, hey, this is this is real. I'm actually kind of curious. Um, so Electrum, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people. That I've have never heard that term before. Yeah, it's it's still around. It's a naturally occurring alloy of gold and silver mixed together with trace amounts of copper and other metals. But its color ranges okay. from pale to bright yellow, depending on the proportions of gold and silver. Um, it's also been produced artificially, and it's also known as green gold. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, huh. Yeah, so like when we go through the spread and standardization of the coins, the use of coins, they quickly spread to neighboring regions and civilizations such as Greece and Rome. Uh, over time, various civilizations minted their own coins with unique designs, sizes, and values. So the standardization of coins facilitated trade across borders and contributed to economic growth. You know, we're, we're used to it now. We got the, the, the penny. The ten cent, the mm-hmm. nickel, the quarter, you know, in, in some cases the fifty cent coin, the the the, the golden dollar, you know, the golden I, dollar coins. I think of uh, Silk Road for some example, because that was such a huge uh, network of markets of marketing yeah. for the ancient world too, and that's probably a big reason why uh, the boost in coins 
came out the way it did because each culture mingled with the other and came up with different ideas. So they had to have their coins for each other and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Um, so now we're going into the art and culture of it. The, the coins mm -hmm. not only served as a medium of exchange, but also offered a canvas for artistic expression and propaganda. Uh, the rulers and empires used coins to showcase their authority and achievements, featuring portraits, symbols, and historical events. Many ancient coins have become valuable artifacts for collectors and historians, shedding light on the cultural and political context of their time. I think this is the, uh, the best examples, you know, like George Washington is on the quarter. We have we had mm -hmm. Sacagawea on the dollar coin, you know, and, and it changes, you know. I mean, we've always had we've always had Lincoln on the penny and so on and so forth. But Queen Elizabeth is on, you know, the European coins. And I think actually when in monarchy, when their leader dies, they actually have to start working on the new um, currency cycle with the new hmm. with with the new king or queen's face on it like what's hap like what's happening now and yeah i never thought about that you know huh. so like, yeah that, that's actually a that's actually a big thing that ha that they have to do like right away currency changes um huh. be on top of that actually let me let me fact check that that's another thing I was thinking of about that too. Um, yeah, while you're fact checking that, I'm trying to think of what. Okay, I was so thinking. yeah, so the currency will change, but okay. that, you know, but that currency is still, you know, it's well, still the, active. the old stuff. Yeah, the old stuff still works. Yeah, so the new British currency will have the new king on it, and this is a Weird. again, this is a thing that that, ha that they have to do. It seems like they would have been on top of that already, because she's you know she wasn't like no spring chicken. So nope. they, then we have then we have paper money. Yep. You know, while coins remain prevalent, the concept of paper money emerged during the Tang Dynasty in China around the seventh century. Really. Yes. Initially used for convenience and trade, paper money gained widespread acceptance due to its convenience and efficiency. This innovation influenced the development of modern banking and currency systems. See, I would have thought that was a U.S. thing. I wouldn't have known that that was actually, I thought paper was a U.S. concept. That's crazy. It goes all the way back to the dynasties yeah. of China and shit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, global trade. As world explanation and trade expanded, coins played a crucial role in international commerce. The Spanish pieces of eight minted from silver mined in the Americas became a global currency during the age of exploration. The global currency. Huh. Interesting where they said that. Uh, and in modern currency, like in the, eight, in the 17th and 18th centuries, countries began to establish centralized banking systems and issued national currencies, replacing private mine minted coins. As economies grew more connected, the gold standard and later the fiat system emerged, providing stability to currency values. And then, of course, we're now in the digital age. In recent decades, digital form of currencies such as cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, they have emerged, challenging traditional notions of money and finance. But these digital currencies rely on blockchain technology and offer new possibilities for financial transactions. So coins in in all their forms, continue to be essential tools for trade and economic prosperity, uh, representing the history and values of societies across the ages. So, you know, from ancient metal discs to modern digital tokens, the story of coins remains an enduring testament to human ingenuity and cooperation, along with trade, culture, you know, there's so much to it. I remember what I was going to say earlier when I was brain farting. Uh, it's a test of time that sticks around even after that society may be gone to like stone. Coins yeah. is one of the few things that actually will stick around and be dug up after tumultuous years of being stuck in the ground. That's the other cool thing about them is their durability. That's true. I mean, it's, I mean, you can't break a coin with your teeth. No. You really can't. Uh, go ahead. And, and please don't try. Please don't try. You know? John says no. I say yeah. Okay. Don't do it. 
Yeah, and I was thinking that for our next episode, I think we could do um, Christopher Nolan, if you're interested. I'll bite. Do a couple um, renditions of directed by directed by Christopher Nolan. I like it. All right, so there you go. Cool. Next week, join us for a Christopher Nolan inspired episode of the Artificial Mind. Uh, Strobel, do you got anything to say before we go? Uh, no, I do like your recommendation for the next show. So tune in, and we will have a Christopher Nolan episode for y'all. Have a good, have a good one, guys. You take it easy. Drink milk. If you're lactose intolerant, you just drink water. You need your D. Yep, yep. <laughs>